All right, we're starting 6.4 Algebra Write Expressions. This is going to be part one, which is going to address one-step expressions, and that's on page 461. And that's what it looks like, so please make sure you're open to page 461 to take some notes. You're also going to need a separate piece of paper for this because we will be taking some notes at the end um, on your own piece of paper. All right, our real world link says Missouri has eight major commercial airports and California has 24 major commercial airports. One, two, and three, um, they want you to fill in the blanks to go step by step with their instructions and we'll come right back and we'll have the answers. All right, so for number one, it says Alabama has four fewer airports than Missouri. We've already learned that Missouri has eight major commercial airports. And they're saying that Alabama has four fewer than Missouri. So we know that Missouri is eight and that Alabama is four fewer. So it says to underline the key math word in the problem, we're going to talk about fewer here. And then, whoops, I guess, circle the operation you can use to determine the how many airports are located in Alabama. It's going to be a subtraction problem. It's going to be 8 minus 4. There are four airports in Alabama. Number 2 says California has three times as many airports as Georgia. So we're going to underline the key math word in the problem, which I believe is times as many. Um, let's see. So we've got California, and we know up here that California has 24. And it's saying that California has three times as many airports as Georgia. So they're trying to say that Georgia times three equals 24. Or another way of saying that is a division problem, that it's going to be 24 divided by three. Because it's three times as many. Well, if it's times as many, that means I need to take my original number and divide it by three to equal eight. So Georgia has eight airlines. So the next one says that Missouri has two times as many airports as Ohio. How many airports does Ohio have? Again, we know that Missouri has eight and that there are two times as many in Missouri. So even though that sounds like we're going to multiply because it says the word times, the key words here are that it says times as many and so that actually is a division problem because I'm taking the number that I already know which is 8 and I'm going to be dividing that by 2 to figure out how many Ohio has because Missouri has two times as many as Ohio. So that's actually a division problem even though it might sound like it's going to be multiplication because it has that wonderful word times in it, it's actually a division problem. All right, so it says write phrases as algebraic expressions. To write verbal phrases as algebraic expressions, follow the steps below. In the second step, defining the variable, choose a variable and decide what it represents. So that's important. Um, you have to be able to identify what your variable is representing. You can't just change everything to a letter and say, oh, Alabama's A and um, California's C and Georgia's G and then I've got a bunch of variables. No, you only need variables for the things that you're actually trying to solve for. The things that you don't know and that you need to solve for. So the first thing here, it says words. We're going to describe the situation and only use the most important words. And that's really a big deal because they put a lot of extra words in for us. Then variable. Choose a variable and to represent the unknown quantity. And then you're going to write an expression to translate your verbal phrase into an algebraic expression. So for number one, it says write each phrase in an algebraic expression. Eight dollars more than Ryan earned. All right, so we don't know how much Ryan earned, but we're earning eight more dollars than what Ryan earned. So the words are eight dollars more than Ryan earned. And they've decided to let D represent the number of dollars Ryan earned. So D equals this part. Okay. And then they're saying, okay, let's make a model. Ryan's earnings, that's this part right here. But whoever is making this is going to make eight more than. So it's going to take the, eight, the D amount of dollars that Ryan earns plus eight more. Okay. So the total expression is going to be D plus 8. D plus 8 more. 
So that's our expression d plus 8. The example number 2 says $10 less than the original price. And I'm really glad they gave us an example with the words less than because those are the trick. That's our trick, our flip-flop. So $10 less than the original price. It says to let P represent the original price, so P for price. So for this space right here, that's P. And it's saying that the original price, but $10 less than that. So we're actually going to take out a chunk that's going to be worth $10, and whatever's left over is the amount we're looking for. So the expression's going to be P minus 10. Not 10 minus P. This is not 10 minus P. Okay? The words less than are our trick word, and those actually tell us that we're going to flip flop the order. So, what would have been 10 minus P is now going to be P minus 10. And think about it, it makes sense. If you're saying that it's $10 less than the original price, you're paying less. You're not paying more than that money, you're paying less. So, let's say it's a video game that's $50. And I said, oh, I can get you $10 less than the original price of $50. Does that mean you're going to spend $60? Does that mean you're going to spend negative $40? No, it means that you're going to do 50 minus 10, which is $40, not negative. You wish. All right, so our less than, and this is a really important one here, less than, you can write um, more than can be written either way. We know that more than means addition, and if it's 10 more than a number, we can do 10 plus p, or we can do p plus 10. But that's because of commutative property, the commutative property of addition says that the order doesn't matter, okay? Order doesn't matter. But when we're talking about subtraction, it's really important for you to understand that the order does matter. If it's P minus 10 and P is $50, $50 minus 10 is a lot different than 10 minus $50. Because this is going to be positive 40, this is going to be negative 40. Big difference between those two numbers. So um, I need you to understand that when it says less than, we need to flip-flop. And really, just as a... As a um, a goal to go by, let's just go ahead and always, when we see that word than, let's flip the order. Even if it's addition and we don't have to flip it, let's flip it because then we'll always see that word than and we'll know that it's a trick and we need to flip flop, okay? Example number three says four times the number of gallons. So in words, we've got four times the number of, fill in the blank, gallons. And it wants to le let blank represent blank. Well, the thing that we don't know is the number of gallons. So I'm going to go ahead and say let G represent the number of gallons. So here's our diagram, okay? And it's number of gallons four times the number of gallons. So I'm going to say, okay, here's gallons, 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 and gallons because it's four times that amount. So the, the expression is four times G. Four times G is my expression here. Four times G. All right, you're going to do these three examples on your own and when you come back I'll have the answers for you. All right, and here are my answers. Um, A was another one with that trick word than, and so fewer means to subtract, but when we've got than, it's our trick flip. So we're gonna have to change the orders, and we're gonna do the whatever the Bulls scored minus four points, and that's what the other team scored. For B, it's multiplication. There's a lot of different ways of writing that. This is the way that you need to start getting used to writing it, just 12F, because that means 12 times F without having to write the multiplication symbol but you can also use the dot or parentheses to separate and show multiplication. And then C, it says the total cost of a shirt and eight 
dollar pair of socks. But when we're talking about the total, we're usually talking about addition there. And in this case, we are adding together the cost of the shirt plus the cost of the socks. And that's going to end up being um, X, which I used for the cost of the shirt, plus 8. All right, now this is where I need you to get out your um, uh, separate piece of paper so that we can write those extra notes. I need you to copy down the page I'm going to show you. You can make this as pretty and artistic as you like or as straightforward and cut and dry as you want. So obviously we have our addition, our subtraction, our multiplication, our division, our equal signs, and our parentheses, and our turnaround words, that than and from. So I'd like for you to copy all this down, and um, it just gives us a lot of the key words that we use in math. So you can pause now so you can copy these down. Thank you so much. See you in school. Part two will be tomorrow.